Uh, greetings once again to my shop. Today's topic is going to be on how do you spray one of our turn pieces with lacquer or a rattle can. Well, here's one of the ways I initially held my pieces and that's just with a piece of wire and you can use a coat hanger. So you just take that wire, put it under a little bit of tension, put that in there. I got the ends bent a little bit. Put that in there. And it holds that pretty securely. That's not a bad way to do it, especially if you got uh, three, four, or five pieces you're doing all at once. Now, right here is one of my old devices for holding a piece in between what might be considered centers. Now let's take a look at the new one I just made. It's a little bit fancier than this and works a whole lot better. Now let's first take a look at my new fixture. What I have here is the ability to put a piece like this hollow form in between centers and spray it. Now to be clear, the only thing moving this is going to be my hand not fixed up to a lathe or a motor or anything like that. So on this end, I've simply got one of my live centers jammed into a Morse taper that I turned, this little bit right here. And I can put any live center on there I want to with uh, a different contour right here that will hold my piece. Now ordinarily, when I'm spraying a piece, it's got a recess or a hole in the top of it, obviously. And on the bottom, I usually have that little nib, nub, <laughs> bit of wood with the center on it. And I leave that on there oftentimes to the point where I'm completely done with the piece. Now, once in a while, I've turned this away and that area is flat right here. So I may use a different... Uh, fixture right here in the end to drive that because this end right here and I'm gonna do that with my hand when I'm spraying with my right hand I can simply move that piece and I'll put this up here in just a second now the other part of this is the end of this that moves along here to adjust to a different dimension of one of my pieces now what I have here is a part at the end that I can adjust. I have this threaded right in here. You can see that. And that's got maybe three-fourths of an inch of travel on it. Maybe we can see that better right there. That's pretty slick. And one thing I've got that I picked up along the way was this cone center that just simply fits in there and that'll uh, go into that point. And this all sits into this hole I drilled up here, right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the cameras off and I'm going to glue that in right here. Let me give you a view of what that looks like right in here. Just drill the hole, turn this blackwood ring to that dimension and that threads in here and I've got a little handle made out of pink ivory as a bottle stopper so that just uh, threads out of there so I got that blackwood ring right here and I've got this is boxwood and I threaded that with a 10 TPI thread chaser which makes it really nice to operate that. So let me glue that in there and I'll give you another shot of that. Now there are a couple reasons for having a fixture like this. One is to hold your piece securely and oftentimes I've got the color on there and I've got 510 or more coats of lacquer on there and I certainly don't want that to to come off there so this is a good way to secure that. The other thing is I can I can turn that and spraying a round surface is difficult. It's a lot more difficult than spraying a 
flat surface. Now, let's take a look at the end of this. And I don't know if that's a headstock or a tailstock. It's, it's like a lathe that doesn't spin. So I've got my handle part right here. And that was fun to make. I love chasing boxwood. And I've got a hole in there, which allows me to put something in there like this cone center. And I'm going to show you some different things I use in this application. So let's just thread that in there. And again, I, I bet I have an inch of travel, which isn't bad. So I'm going to back that off. I'm going to put my cone center in there. And, and where I got that, I think it was at Craft Supplies. So I'm going to put that right here. And I'm going to bring my... Is that the tail center? I don't know. Now I can just fine tune that, tighten that up, and I can spin it. And that, that spins pretty true. That was fun to make. It took a long time to make this, but uh, I think this will come in very handy. I'll give you another shot of that right here. Now this is a piece that's uh, been trued up on the outside. I can go ahead and finish that piece. And anytime I can put this back on my little fixture here, and I'm good to go. All right, now let me show you one more aspect of this machine. Okay, now one more necessary element of this fixture is a way to move this part of the fixture. So if I got a really big hollow form there, I can move it way back. I can move it closer. And this is a big improvement over the one I had before. It just didn't uh, adjust very easily. So I can just move that here, clamp that down with this little clamp. And I'm pretty sure I got this clamp from Woodhaven. I'll put the name up. Years ago, it's been sitting there and I probably use that for different applications. So that holds it in there pretty firmly. And there we go. You can adjust that, and this simply sits in there like that. And I've got that screwed securely with a nice triangle of wood screwed in securely. And that's not going to go any place. And the same thing with this end. I've got a couple of triangles of wood to make a nice 90 degree angle, and that is not going any place. Now let me show you the way this works right here. This is a live center, and I've got a nut in this piece of wood right here. Let me show you another example. I've got a bunch of these right here. Just different profiles. This one is a, a jig for turning spheres. There's a little hole right here. Now placing the Allen wrench in that little hole in the live center prevents it from turning which allows me to thread on or off whatever profile piece I have that's attached to a nut. You put that in there and you can thread that on or off. So whatever I need to do for a profile right here on this end, I can simply do that. And let me show you a few of them. So that's got a hole in it that I can put maybe a cone center in. Here's another one. Here's, here's another one that has a big wide area and a little foam pad on it. I'm not sure what I did that for, but it's there if I need it. And this nut in here corresponds to the threads on this particular live center. And I've got a Nova, I've got a one-way, and they're all the same. You just have to take this to the hardware store and match up your nut. There's one of my, pardon the expression, nuts. And I got a bunch of these. For one reason or another, I uh, needed something with a particular profile. This one has a little, um, it's carpet underlayment on there. And if I have a finished piece, I'll just use that and it won't mar the, the bottom of it. The other thing I do on a finished piece, while I'm ranting and raving about this, 
let's say that I've got this piece completely flat right here and the pieces for the most part finished. And I want to do a little sanding or something on, on this fixture. I'll take a round piece of wood like this and I'll simply double stick tape that on there and put it back between centers and this will go into here without marring my the piece I'm working on. All right, a lot of good information, I hope. And I got a whole box full of little, uh, you know, jam chucks and different things. So I hope this helped. I'd love to hear your comments and please share my videos. That's important. Uh, gets gets the word out a little bit. I think this is a good a good video for anybody who is spraying. All right. Thanks very much, and I'll talk to you next time.